Hey, what's going on guys? Dana from ModBot here, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to calibrate your calibrate, 3D, calibrate 3D, printer, 3D, printer, 3D printer. In layman's terms, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make sure that your 3D printer is spitting out the correct amount of plastic uh, that it thinks it's spitting out. So why might you wanna do this? Well, if your 3D printer's E-steps are not set correctly, then your prints are either going to be over extruding where they will have all sorts of sag and they won't look very good, or there will be under extruding uh, where it's not laying down enough material and then they will be really brittle and fall apart and also not look good either. This process is just gonna make sure that, say, if your 3D printer thinks that it's extruding 100 millimeters of filament, that it actually is extruding 100 millimeters of filament. Now, this is something that you would wanna do if you are building a 3D printer from scratch, if you uh, upgraded a 3D printer's extruder, so that way it's got a different gear ratio now, or if you're just having serious issues with under extrusion or over extrusion on your 3D printer, there are things that you can adjust in the slicer such as flow rate, but the first thing you should be doing before getting into any of that is making sure that your E-steps are set appropriately. So in this video, we are going to be taking a look at how to do it. I'll take you guys along uh, with my process of me doing that on my own machine here. And in the end of this, you will be able to make sure that your 3D printer is actually extruding the correct amount of filament. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So for starters, let's go over some of the few things that you will need to actually measure the E-steps and calibrate them on your 3D printer. For starters, we're going to need some filament. I highly recommend a just light colored PLA material that is easy to mark with a permanent marker. We're also going to need some digital calipers. This will be used to measure the uh, extrusion length that we are wanting to have the printer extrude. A permanent marker to actually physically make those markings on the filament and a USB cable to interface the printer with our computer. On the software side, I recommend using Pronterface. Links will be in the description down below. This is an old piece of software that works incredibly well and is simple to use for this uh, kind of stuff. Once done with that, go ahead and turn on your 3D printer, navigate to the temperature and set the temperature of your hot end to whatever you'd use for PLA. In this instance, I'm just using 210. Wait for that to heat up. Or if you're editing, use editing magic to quickly get to temperature. Once at temperature, load up that filament into your hot end. Just push it all the way through. You want to make sure that it is actually extruding out of the nozzle. Once done, we're going to set our calipers to 120 millimeters so that way we can mark 120 millimeters on our filament. We're going to have it extrude 100 millimeters, but the reason why we're marking it at 120 is if for some reason your extruder is over extruding and you only marked it at 100 millimeters, well, when it extrudes 100 millimeters, it'll actually go beyond that and you won't be able to see your marking. So by marking it at 120 millimeters, we're giving ourselves a little bit of slack in case it is over extruding or under extruding. The easiest way I found is to take the bottom portion of the digital calipers and have that placed up against where the filament would enter into your extruder or into your guide tube, and then just take a Sharpie and mark it at the 120 millimeter point, which should be at the bottom of your digital calipers. Make sure you mark it uh, well enough to where you'll actually be able to see it. This is again why I recommend using a light colored filament. Now jumping over to Pronterface, we're gonna connect to our 3D printer. Make sure that the extruder or the hot end, I mean, is still at temperature. I go ahead and hit 210 again just to be certain that it's not cooling down. Then we're going to send over a M83 command in the bottom right. If you just type it in and hit enter or send, it'll send that over. Once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and tell the 3D printer to extrude 100 millimeters of filament. I will go ahead and paste on the screen here the uh, command of what you want to send over to have it do that. Then sit tight and let your printer extrude the 100 millimeters of filament. Once this is done, grab your digital calipers and just like we measured before at 120, we're going to measure to see how much is left. If all is correct with your extruder, it should be at 20 millimeters since we told it to extrude 100 and we had it marked at 120. In mine, there's 50 millimeters left over, which clearly shows that mine is severely under extruding, which is what I expected because I just changed my extruder. Next, we're gonna go ahead and send an M503 command, which is gonna display a bunch of data on our 3D printer. 
Looking through this, you'll find a row that says M92, and it'll have your XYZ and extruder E-steps. My E-steps for my extruder are set to 93, so you're going to want to head and write that down. Once you're done with that, you're going to need to open up a calculator and do a little bit of math so we, th we can get a little information that we'll need here. The first thing we're going to do is take 120 and subtract the length that was left when you measured. So in my situation, I had 50.8 left from the extruder to the part that I had marked. And so when you subtract 120 by that value, it'll give you the actual length that was extruded. Make sure that you write down that actual length. Next, you're going to need to take what your current E-step value is, which mine was 93, and you're going to multiply that by 100, which will give you the actual steps taken. So in my situation, that's 9300. Now take that value, which in my case is 9300, and divide it by the actual length extruded. The value that that gives you is the new accurate steps per millimeter value, which is what you're going to want to change your E-steps value to. And to do that, we're going to send over this command, which I'll post again as well. It's just M92, and then you're going to add E, and then whatever that value is. In my instance, it's 134.4, so I am setting my um, printer's E steps, the extruder, to that value. Then send over the M500 command. This is just going to go ahead and save that value. Once done with that, I went ahead and rebooted my printer, sent over the M503 command, and just double checked to make sure it had actually updated. And as you can see here, it's now showing E134.4, and I know that I am good to go. Once again, we're sending over that M83 command, and we're going to extrude another 100 millimeters of filament. In this case, once now that we've upgraded or updated the E-steps, it should be at the value um, that we're expecting and there should be right around 20 millimeters left over. Once it's done extruding, take your digital calipers again and again the goal there should be if we marked it at 120 millimeters and we told it to extrude 100 millimeters, there should be 20 millimeters between the marking and where the filament would enter into your printer. In this instance, we are at 20.2, which to me is perfect. If you're still far off, you're just basically going to repeat this process until you get closer to a number that makes sense and is reasonable. But yeah, that is it. You are ready to go, and I'm excited to be able to print with this new extruder on my Creality Ender 3. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and that it was helpful. It took a lot longer than I would like to admit, but uh, I think the video turned out really good and hopefully will help a lot of you guys that are uh, having issues with calibrating a new extruder. If if you do find the content entertaining and useful, consider supporting me on Patreon. Huge shout out to all my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome and allow me to spend a lot more time doing this, what I love. And if you are not already, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.